The pump attaches to the person's belt, or you may have to provide a special belt or vest. The pump can be positioned at the front side or back, whatever is most comfortable for the person being sampled. Note that the tube is long enough to allow the person to work. The cyclone assembly is attached at the collar. This is done so that the collected sample represents the air in the person's breathing zone. It is very important that the cyclone assembly remain in the breathing zone. For example, if the cyclone was attached to the collar of a t-shirt and the work environment was very warm, sweating could stretch the collar such that the cyclone was well out of the breathing zone. The resulting sample would not be representative of the air the employee was breathing. Sometimes you have to be quite creative in attaching the cyclone. Before turning on the pump, it is imperative that you tell the employee what is happening. Explain why samples are being collected and the sampling process. Tell the employee how to reach you during the sampling period. This is very important because if anything should go wrong, such as the tube breaking or coming off of the cyclone or the pump shutting off, the problem can be remedied quickly and the sample salvaged. The employee should be told that sampling is a scientific event using precision instrumentation. The instrumentation should not be abused. The employee should also be instructed to not inadvertently bias a sample. It should not be placed, for example, on a dusty floor. The cyclone must not be turned upside down. This will result in dust separated by the cyclone being dumped onto the filter. Very minute amounts of dust entering the filter can result in an overexposure as measured by the laboratory. Turn on the fully charged pump and record the time. Let the pump run for the entire employee's work shift. You should check every few hours to see that everything is operating correctly. It is best to stay with the employee all shift, though this is not possible if you are sampling more than one worker. At the end of the shift, Turn the pump off, note the time, and remove the cassette. Reinsert the two plugs into each end of the cassette. Put in the plastic bags provided and prepare for shipment to the laboratory. Then remove the pump and sampling train from the worker. A control filter should be submitted to the laboratory along with the filters used to collect particulate material. These filters are used to determine the amount of outgassed material deposited on the filter from the plastic cassette holder itself. One control filter should be submitted for each day of sampling, and that filter should be from the same lot as those filters used to collect material. The control filter should be labeled as control. The control filter should be exposed to the same time, temperature, and handling conditions as the ones that are used for sampling. The inlet and outlet plugs must not be removed. The control filter can be carried in a shirt pocket while checking the sampling process. The filter should be stored with the regular samples after sampling and sent to the laboratory along with the other filters. Cassettes are fairly rugged, however they should be handled with some care. You should pack them with noodles or other packing material when you mail them to the laboratory for analysis. This will help prevent any dust from being bounced off the filter during the shipment. 